Now, I'm not naive. I never thought that the mere fact of my election would usher in peace and harmony and <laughs> some post-partisan era. I truly believe that the day I'm inaugurated, uh, not only does the country look at itself differently, but the world looks at America differently. Uh, that uh, I represent a clean break from the Bush-Cheney approach. This was the moment when the rise of the oceans began to slow and our planet began to heal. That's why we've excluded lobbyists from policy-making jobs or seats on federal boards and commissions. Thank you, President-elect Obama, for the honor that you have bestowed upon me. I look forward to working with you and the members of this national security team assembled here. So I am extraordinarily pleased that Melody Barnes, one of the most respected policy experts in America, will serve as my director of domestic, the Domestic Policy Council and that she will be working hand-in-hand -hand with my economic policy team to chart a course to economic recovery. And if the Republican leadership is going to insist that, that 60 votes in the Senate are required to do any business at all in this town, a supermajority, then the responsibility to govern is now yours as well. But you have 60 Democratic seats, a healthy majority in the House. Right. If you don't get this, isn't this a fight inside the Democratic Party? and that Republicans really aren't playing, you can't really blame the Republicans for this one? Well, first of all, uh, you haven't seen me out there blaming the Republicans. I'm proposing that we take $30 billion of the money Wall Street banks have repaid and use it to help community banks give small businesses the credit they need to stay afloat. If American taxpayers are financing this solution, then they have to be treated like investors. They should get every penny of their tax dollars back our approach would preserve the right of Americans who have insurance to keep their doctor and their plan. If you want to keep the health insurance you got, you can keep it. That you're not going to have anybody getting in between you and your doctor in your decision making. And I think that some of the provisions that got snuck in uh, might have violated that pledge. We are prepared to freeze government spending for three years. <laughs> spending related to our national security. Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security will not be affected. But all other discretionary government programs will. This is not a spending freeze um, across the board where every single program would be cut, and I think there's been some confusion about that. For example, education, the Department of Education budget actually goes up by 6% in the budget. And that's why I'm calling for a new jobs bill tonight. We are working on a... a we're told not to call it another stimulus bill, call it a jobs bill. To end the outsized influence of lobbyists, to do our work openly, to give our people the government they deserve. And you promised that health care negotiations would take place on C-SPAN, and that hasn't happened. And your administration recently turned down a request from a watchdog group seeking a list of health care executives who have visited the White House to talk about health care reform. Also, the TARP Inspector General recently said that your White House is withholding too much information on the bank bailouts. I'm also calling on Congress to continue down the path of earmark reform. What you likely have heard about is that this bill does include earmarks. But what frustrates the American people is a Washington where every day is election day. We can't wage a perpetual campaign the president has now asked 2008 campaign manager David Plouffe to come back. Neither party should delay or obstruct every single bill. A lot of things that in a normal legislative year would be considered really big achievements. You know, the, the tobacco legislation, making sure that our kids are protected uh, from addiction. A, a very uh, aggressive uh, regulation of the credit card industry. Uh, housing fraud prevention making sure that we've got a, a robust national service chip, which gave four million kids who didn't have health insurance uh, health insurance, you know, restoring the basic principle that uh, there should be equal pay for equal work. Because of the steps we took, there are about two million Americans working right now who would otherwise be unemployed. The Recovery Act 
saved thousands and thousands of jobs. Now, the Recovery Act the President uh, uh, passed uh, has created more than uh, uh, or saved more than two million jobs. Largely as a result of the recovery plan that's put money back into our economy that saved or created uh, a million and a half jobs. You didn't have jobs. The confirmation of well-qualified public servants shouldn't be held hostage to the pet projects or grudges of a few individual senators. There is no doubt in my mind, in Senator Schumer's mind, in Senator Lieberman's mind, that the president could easily find 10 conservative Republican judges who would meet the 60-vote threshold. So no, I will not give up on trying to change the tone of our politics. I love Tony Blair. I met with him before he came. One of my favorite guys, but he can't be our only ally in the world. You know, that, that's like, a, that's a pretty big burden for Brother Blair to have to shoulder. I can only imagine the conversations he's having with the rest of the European Union every day. God, what's up with you and Bush? And he's got to, he's got to explain, you know, well, you know. You know, it's, it's like having the, having the uh, sort of the uncle, the crazy uncle that you, you, you don't really want to talk about. <laughs> Keeps on coming out. Sadly, some of the unity we felt after 9-11 has dissipated. And we can argue all we want about who's to blame for this, but I'm not interested in relitigating the past. And what has been missing is uh, a, a, a president and a White House that taps into that yearning uh, in a serious way. Rather than tell the American people to shop, what I would have done uh, is to say, uh, now is the time for us to meet some great challenges. We've been tested, uh, and yet we have survived, and we are going to be stronger than we were. Each time lobbyists game the system or politicians tear each other down instead of lifting this country up, we lose faith. Democrats are an opinionated bunch. You know, the other side, they just kind of sometimes do what they're told. We face a deficit of trust deep and corrosive doubts about how Washington works.